Like the melody line in music has harmony, it brings fullness to a song. I believe the church is like a song. It sings to the community of who Jesus is. What if the church flipped the melody line in that every missionary disciple being sent out Monday through Friday was the melody line? And what if on Sunday morning, the gathered church was the harmony that helped to envision and equip and encourage those that are out serving and making known the gospel of Jesus. Here in the classroom and in this community, I'm a missionary. I pray over my desk and my students by name and just ask the Holy Spirit to be here. He's really just started to show me that my mission field is in the walls of this classroom, but it extends to every person those students represent. And so my specific calling has been to go to their homes or go meet them in the community. They feel a part of my family, not just a part of my teaching job. I've had a lot of opportunities to pray over families, pray over students, and that's not something I could do in a conference here in my classroom. It's the fact that God is present in a church building just as much, if not more, sometimes on you know a porch or on a couch or at a kitchen table. He is present and He can work. So there is no A team and B team. We are all a part of God's plan and we have a very specific purpose to reach people for the kingdom. I think the work of ministry defined by Paul is not to define or confine the work of ministry to two hours on Sunday morning, but to see the leveraging of equipping people to live out their calling as a missionary disciple in everyday life, wherever they live, learn, work, or play, to see the kingdom of God advance and the fullness of Jesus be on display for all to see. From the get-go, the, the idea was to demonstrate the goodness of God by caring for those who are often forgotten. I think that this is a reflection of Jesus. It's a reflection of what He did. And like, like there's, a, there's a measure of engaging in not just the physical sense, but the, the emotional and the spiritual the, those that are ostracized and forgotten in the world. How do you bring about some measure of community? How do you restore uh, beauty? I'm not an artist, but how do I restore beauty in the sense of someone's life? It's done unto the Lord, then it's a redemptive work. It's a work where we get to push back the curse and we get to be a part of new creation of what is God doing in the world and what is He pointing to what He's going to do one day. So whether you don't have to be a pastor, you don't have to be a physician, you can be a custodian, you can, you can be a stay-at-home mom. Like everything has value uh, if it's done unto the Lord and done in a way that reflects His glory and His goodness. What if every domain in Greater Charleston and beyond, in medicine, in education, in hospitality, had kingdom representation that was present and prevailing to saturate every life with the gospel? I've been in the hospitality industry for a couple decades in leadership roles, and it is a passion. You know, it's, it's what I believe my spiritual gift is, is to offer hospitality, and it's something that just innately comes out of me. Sunday Suppers was the idea of Barclay, one of my neighbors. It's not just where I have others from church that come here, it's just the neighborhood. And, and so it's been really great to know others, find out where they are in their spiritual journey if it comes up in conversation. And, uh, and 
see where that goes, you know, see how the Lord's going to use it. Jesus is the ultimate servant. He came, he served us, he laid down his life for us. And so I see that in hospitality that, you know, we're offering ways to take care of guests or friends or neighbors or the underserved in a way that helps them. What if we as a church looked at our city and said, Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done here in my city as it is in heaven. I believe if that were true and we were all engaged in that song, the melody line from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter one sums it up. It says that he put all things under his feet. Who? Jesus. Why? so that he can fill all things and the saturation of the gospel and the kingdom presence can be known to all people, every man, woman, and child.